I'm Aaron Graber with Ventrac. In this video, we'll go over the ballpark groomer and renovator attachments. The ballpark groomer and renovator are perfect attachments for schools or municipalities who have a number of ball fields to take care of and limited manpower. These attachments allow you to regularly maintain fields with a single operator so that fields remain playable, safe, and in good condition. Far too many people that are maintaining these fields are using basic equipment that does nothing more than drag the field. And that's problematic because all that really does over time is drag dirt to the outfield. When combined together, these attachments allow you to fix virtually any problem that might arise on an infield. This setup is capable of effectively removing and preventing low spots, removing weed creep, performing basic field leveling, helping to dry out fields after a rainstorm, and performing basic dragging. It's also the perfect setup to provide a quick grooming in between games for something like a tournament setup where you have a limited window of opportunity to work. For a task like breaking in a field in early spring, this setup allows for one operator to do it in a couple hours, which replaces a team of volunteers that might take over a day to do. The front renovator attachment attaches to the tractor with the hitch arms and the two standard hydraulics and requires no additional kits or accessories. The groomer on the rear requires that the tractor has a three-point and we recommend an optional hydraulic top link to make the operation easier. Having a foot pedal kit also makes it easier to maintain forward progress while adjusting the top link on the rear groomer. The groomer and renovator are two separate attachments that we recommend using together, but they can be purchased separately. The front renovator can be used by itself on a Ventrac, and the rear groomer can be used on a Ventrac by itself, or on any other piece of equipment with a Category 1 three-point. Every field and condition are a little bit different, so there's no way we can make a blanket recommendation for the settings of these attachments that applies to everybody every time. Because of this, we'll go through the front and rear attachments individually and talk about all the settings of each individual component as they relate to the whole system and what they do by themselves. The first configuration is if you have a wet field to prep or a field that is very dry and hard on top. In both of those conditions, you're going to have only the rear groomer down, the leveling bar will be off the ground, the roller will be in contact, and the spike bar will be in contact. You can get more or less aggressive with the spike bar using the top link. In these wet conditions, you want to open the field up with the spike bar so that it helps dry it out faster. In very dry and hard conditions, you're using the spike bar to break apart those chunks on the surface so that you have loose material to work with. The second basic configuration is for weed management. Usually this will only be done at the beginning of the season, and periodically as stuff is growing into the infield. For this configuration, only your front attachment will be in the ground and only your front renovation blades as well. This simply cuts the weeds at the root zone so that they can be pulled up and onto the top of the surface and removed so that you have just dirt to work with. The third basic configuration is leveling and low spot maintenance. This is the only configuration where you have both attachments on the ground. The front attachment will have the renovation blades in the ground and the scar fire tines behind it, as well as the leveling bar down and working. The rear attachment will be on the roller with the leveling bar engaged and the spike bar disengaged. For this step, it's important that the tractor be in low range and you use as long and straight of passes as possible. You want to go as many different directions as you can over low spots to help pull material in from a variety of places and create the most level surface possible. In this step, the renovation blades are pulling material up and it's flowing through the scar fire tines and both leveling bars so that it can help smooth it out and then the roller hits it again and packs it back down once it's been smoothed over. Since you're cutting underneath the overall plane of the field, when you get to a low spot, you're either cutting into it or just underneath of it to help pull that material away and then replace it with new material, therefore fixing the spot rather than just like a standard drag where you're dragging material over top but the low spot is still there. This is the most important step, so it's going to take the longest. If a field has very bad low spots, it's not uncommon to spend several hours using this step to help fix them. But over an entire season, you can make dramatic improvements and eventually get to the point where the field is nearly perfect. The fourth basic configuration, and also the final step in getting a ball field ready for play, is finish grooming. In this configuration, only the rear attachment will be down, the leveling bar will be disengaged, the roller will be on the ground, the spike bar will be disengaged, and you'll be using also the drag or the brush kit. There are two drags available for the rear groomer, a steel drag and a cocoa mat. A steel drag is the best all-around drag that can handle basically any conditions, and the cocoa mat 
is great for when it's a little bit drier and it leaves the best, most pristine finish. When it comes to any grooming or renovating steps, it's important to remember variety is crucial. If you always go in the same direction from the same starting point, you'll end up moving material away from that area, and that can cause greater problems over the course of the field's lifetime. You want to make sure you pick different starting points and vary the patterns that you use so that the field stays uniform over time. On the Ventrac, it's best to perform all grooming and renovating tasks in low range. A slower and consistent speed is crucial for proper leveling. Occasionally, finish grooming can be done in high range, but you want to be careful because if you go too fast, you can displace too much material. Weight transfer is not necessary for this attachment, but in some conditions, if you have all six weights on the front, you can use a little bit of weight transfer to help improve traction and turning of the tractor. It's important that when the groomer or renovator is being used, it's actually in float. If you have enough fields to take care of, this attachment is enough to justify the tractor purchase just by itself, but it's also a great addition to a fleet of other Ventrac equipment. It's the perfect attachment for schools and municipalities who have a Ventrac for another reason, and adding this attachment means that they just saved a ton of labor costs. On the front renovator, there are three working components. The renovation blades, the scar fire tines, and the leveling bar. The weights can be mounted on the front bar on the right and left side. There are three separate renovation blades that are stacked together to make one row. These are individually replaceable and they're controlled with this hydraulic cylinder using the SDLA lever from the operator seat. These blades are used to cut edge lines, cut weeds out, and help remove high spots. The scar fire tines are mounted in tandem with the renovation blades, so they also move up and down with the SDLA lever. There's two positions for the scar fire tines. With a pin on the right and left side, you can change them from the high to the low position in the high position, these will be up and out of the way. In the low position, they'll work with the renovation blades to break apart the loose material that flows over them. These can also be used to incorporate extra infield mix that's been spread on the field. The last piece of the front attachment is the leveling bar. The adjustment for this is on the left side of the attachment, and it can be allowed to float or set into a fixed position. The leveling bar carries material to maintain a level surface or to fill in low spots. The rear groomer consists of a leveling bar, roller, spike bar, and this one is shown with an optional brush kit, and the weights are mounted on the top here. If you have a drag on this groomer, that will be mounted into these locations here. This leveling bar is also used to carry material and fill in low spots. You can be more or less aggressive with this bar based on how the top link is adjusted. When the rear attachment is used, the roller will always be on the ground. The roller is very important because it helps pack material into low spots and bury small rocks. You can be more or less aggressive with the roller by adjusting the number of weights that you have on top of the unit. The spike bar is used in wet conditions to help aid in the drying process or to break apart hard surface conditions. The adjustment for the spike bar is on the right side of the unit. You can let it in float if you pull the pin out or you can set it to one of these depth settings fixed. If it's fixed, you can control the aggressiveness of the spike bar based on how the top link is adjusted and how the attachment is rolled back and forth on the roller. The optional brush kit is located on the back of the groomer and has fold-out wings that help to capture some of the material that spills over from the roller. The brush kit is great for dry conditions to help leave a finished groomed surface. It can be used in tandem with either of the drags or by itself. The adjustment for the brush is just like the adjustment for the spike bar, but it's located on the other side of the unit. The brush can also run in float or be set to a fixed position. Both the steel drag and the cocoa mat slide into the square tube receiver on the back of the groomer. They can easily be pinned up for storage while using just the groomer or renovator attachments or for storage while trailering. When operating the front attachment, it needs to be in float using the SDLA lever. To operate the rear groomer, you'll use the left and middle three-point levers. The left moves the three-point up and down, and when it's in contact with the ground, you'll want to run it in float, pushed all the way forward. The middle lever changes the hydraulic top link, which makes it so that you can be more or less aggressive with either the spike bar or the leveling bar. There are a few general tips for using the ballpark groomer and renovator that will help you get the most of the attachments and experience the best results. Doing renovation work requires that the dirt be mostly dry so that it can be carried to low spots and filled in. But if it's too dry and dusty, it'll turn to powder and it won't be able to be moved as easily. Obviously, if the field is too wet, you won't be able to move dirt that way either. You can put up to six weights on both the front attachment and rear attachment. 
Putting the full amount of weights on this attachment, both front and rear, gives you the most control. The rear is especially important because the weights are directly related to the impact of the drum on the ground. Before you start working on a field, make sure you find out and mark where all the base plugs are or anything else that's underground. A lot of fields will have two separate bases for baseball or softball, and you wanna make sure that you don't hit those with the blades. Remember never to go too deep with the front cutting blades. Most fields have a base layer of clay or something similar that if brought to the surface can cause problems. You wanna make sure that the blades only cut into the top layers of infield mix. The nice thing about the Ventrac is that it's capable of maintaining the entire property around the ball field. Obviously, the ballpark groomer and renovator does its job on the infield. We also have finish mowers for use on the outfield and surrounding areas. There's three other attachments that are crucial to an operation if they're concerned about the best possible results for this. The turbine blower is great for drying fields off after a heavy rainstorm to help get it in playable condition faster. This is especially useful if you have games immediately after rainstorms that you can't reschedule. The power bucket is great for moving new infield mix to anywhere on the field and spreading it with precise control. The power rake is great for fields that have heavy growth during spring and need more renovation work than the front attachment is capable of doing. You can use the power rake to skim off that really heavy weed growth and remove it from the field before you start working the dirt underneath. It's worth mentioning that it's never a good idea to let the field go this far, but a lot of municipalities and cities are in this predicament because they have no labor allocated for these fields through the fall and they overgrow with nobody playing on them. The aerator can be used in the outfield to help improve the turf and also make the surface a little bit softer for players. The Ventrac Ballpark Groomer and Renovator is one of the very few systems available that's been designed to properly manage any issue that might arise on an infield. And it's the only system where you can remove the groomer and renovator attachments and use the tractor for an endless number of other tasks. Thanks for watching this video on the Ballpark Groomer and Renovator. For more information on this attachment and others, visit our website at ventrac.com or call a local dealer for a demo.